So, I saw X-Men Apocalypse, and there's a scene where the younger mutants have just gotten done seeing a movie. They're walking out of the movie theater, and they've just seen Return of the Jedi, and they're talking about which Star Wars movie was the best one, yada yada yada. They're having their own little review, and one of the girls says, well, I think at least we can all agree, the third one is always the worst one. <laughs> it's supposed to be a very obvious kind of, you know, a jab at X-Men 3, because it universally sucked. But you know what? X-Men Apocalypse, you were not big enough in the pants to be talking big about how X-Men 3 sucks because the rule of threes applies to you too. As I mentioned, X-Men Apocalypse is the third in this new sort of trend of X-Men movies by uh, kind of rebooting the whole thing, trying again. Uh, X-Men First Class came out in the 60s. Sorry, X-Men First Class was set in the 60s. It did not come out in the 60s. Uh, would have been some pretty good effects for back then. But X-Men Apocalypse is one of the more disappointing movies I've seen so far this year because of just having to follow X-Men First Class and X-Men Days of Future Past. Um, regardless of how you feel about which one of those two was better, it seems pretty universally agree that those are both really solid, really well done movies, better than they had any real right to be. X-Men Apocalypse then tries to be bigger and grander and tell a darker story, and yet uh, so many little things pile up on each other and grow into bigger problems that by the time the movie has reached its third act, everything has compounded onto itself and the movie is just flat out broken. By trying to be bigger and grander in its size and scope, it ends up just kind of ending up schlocky and, and silly and kind of lame. Now, of course, there's a place for schlock-type movies. I myself own a collection of stupid schlock um, that is completely stupid to the point of hilarity. But this, I still had a problem with this movie because, again, it's following First Class and Days of Future Past. And there's also just the fact that there is just way too much going on in the movie, and it, if the movie was a person, it doesn't know how to juggle that many things in the air, and it all just ends up getting dropped. I remember specifically the breaking point that I had, because I was following the movie okay up to a certain point. There were some things that were bothering me, but nothing too big until that scene. There's a moment where a scene with Mystique and Nightcrawler end, they teleport away, and then we see some other characters, you know, doing their thing, things going on, things happening. Like, two or three days worth of stuff happens. And then they cut back to Mystique and Nightcrawl again. It shows where they teleported to, and then they just keep going. As if the three days worth... And then they talk about the things that happened in between, like they're happening right then and there. But it obviously didn't, because days have gone by, and it... it, it, it broke the movie for me because I immediately was like, okay, I no longer understand where things are happening and when, what's the sequence? How are things happening? And I, my, my brain, it can't, it, it, it isn't. Which is even stranger to think about in retrospect because there are so many moments in the movie where they're just so on the nose about what they're trying to get across. It's almost like they think that their audience is an idiot and they need to take a hammer with the label of what they want you to learn and just beat you over the head with it. I forgot her name, but the girl that plays Xavier's love interest, who has nothing to do in the movie. There's a moment where she's talking about like the roots of Apocalypse and things like that, this, this new bad guy, this new mutant, and she just kind of goes, oh, rabble, 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 supposedly to bring about you know, the apocalypse. And then it cuts to Xavier and it does like this dramatic zoom in and he just goes, the end of the world. We understand what the apocalypse is. You don't need to, there's, there, the movie is loaded with stuff like that. They can't let you think for a second. They have to just blunt force trauma so much of the information that you already understood on your own. It, it's a confusing movie because on the one hand the plot is so... If it, it's very Batman v Superman because a lot of the scenes uh, taking place in, in the story of the movie are so interchangeable and if they don't feel like they're in the proper order so it feels confusing. 
but then they take so much effort to hammer home the stuff that you already understand. It's like, it, it, you, they're just kind of like, okay, no, I understand that. Can you elaborate on this? And then the movie just doesn't do it. The editing in the movie, too, is uh, just as confusing as the plot is. Um, a lot of people don't immediately notice editing issues with a movie, but your brain does pick up on it. You may not be able to necessarily break down and analyze what is what's making you feel bad or what's making you feel uncomfortable when you're watching a poorly edited movie, but your brain does pick up on it because generally you watch enough good movies that you kind of sense a pattern. Uh, subconsciously, you kind of recognize a pattern with how a movie is edited and paced together. Um, and in a movie like X-Men Apocalypse, something rubs you the wrong way because it's not done quite right and it's confusing. So while you may not be able to necessarily uh, vocalize what the problem is, X-Men Apocalypse has this issue in the editing where things are not shot ever well enough or put, cut together well enough that you understand where things are in the... There's a moment, uh, just as an example, there's a moment where uh, useless love interest, for some reason, is in the Middle East and is tracing this cult that worships Apocalypse. I don't know wh why she is doing that and why the CIA has sent her there by herself. Um, doesn't really seem like something the CIA is responsible for. Anyway, she's down there and she's She's walked into this big open ritual room where they're worshipping uh, the grave of this mutant apocalypse. But the way it's shot, and the way it's cut together, you cannot understand where she is in relation to the cult group. It's hard to tell, and it's not a very big room, but it's always a close-up shot of her face, and then the next thing you see is the cult group worshipping or whatever. There's no open, like, wider shot to kind of un to get a grasp of where everyone in the room is. A very basic example would be the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. When they sneak in, they follow, um, when they follow Barbosa and his crew down into where they have all collected all the gold and they're going to do the sacrifice and everything, there's a big wide open shot so that the audience can see how this room is set, where the bad guys are, where the good guy is in relation to them and then after that once it starts cutting back and forth between the two the audience can kind of understand where things are and point of view all that stuff that never happens once in this movie not once do we ever really get to understand where things are in relation to each other and that's really a problem especially in fight scenes because the action is so quick that you kind of need to be able to understand it's all visual so I'm not sure who edited the movie but they were paid too much the acting is kind of all over the place there's some there's no one that's really outright bad there are just people that the worst that it gets is people that just don't do anything they don't really perform the characters badly but there are several characters that just contribute nothing to the overall story um, like I said the young lady that plays Xavier's love interest is just there to be a love interest uh, Nightcrawler doesn't really get a whole lot of play Psylocke, if, I'm sorry if Psylocke's one of your favorite mutant characters in X-Men because God, she could have been cut from the movie and make almost no difference whatsoever. Uh, her impact is little to none, and she has about eight or nine lines of dialogue in the movie. They do some good stuff with Quicksilver's character, and I for I'm so bad with names and faces, but the actor that plays Quicksilver is just as good in this as he was in Days of Future Past. His quirkiness stays very much there, um, and he has kind of a personal thing to, uh, to a personal not grudge, but a personal obstacle with which to climb over. I do have one gripe, his entrance scene, they they try to outdo his the scene that everyone remembers from Days of Future Past by doing literally the exact same thing, just to a different song. And it's like, you know, everyone did like that scene, but we also liked the character. He was fun, he was quirky. Uh, he was interesting to watch, and it was fun watching him kind of bounce off with the other characters in the movie, because they were such a stark contrast. 
If you just did that and developed the character more, which they did, that's all you really need. You don't need to cop out like this and literally do the same sequence again. Oh, and God, Jennifer Lawrence, I feel so bad. She does not want to be in here. She is so obviously done with these X-Men movies now that I could understand if she was feeling that way in Days of Future Past, but she still managed to churn out a decent performance. Here, she doesn't give a rat's ass. She's done. <laughs> it's so all over her face. Again, it's not a bad performance. It's just so painfully... Like, there's not really any... There's, the investment that she had before is gone. But they keep pushing her to the front, like, because, I mean... Because it's Jennifer Lawrence, and she's popular, and she can put asses in seats. I'm sorry to say, but if she doesn't want to be in these movies, we don't need her in there. There's plenty of characters to choose from. One of the great things about X-Men is that if you didn't like one character, you could watch somebody else. Um, and it's just, it sucks, because I know she's better than that. Uh, we all know, we've seen her in better things. She's a great actress. But, God, not in this. Um... It goes without saying, the best performances are still McAvoy and Fassbender, individually and together. They, they're far and away the best. Fassbender has some of the... I'm working here, phone! Fassbender, in particular, has some, some of the best scenes in the movie. There are some genuinely good uh, emotional moments that really get you to understand why he's doing what he's doing. But that's all in the first half. In the second half... Xavier and Magneto are basically just tools. They're conduits that other characters use to get things done. And... God, that sucks. <laughs> That's such a lame, lazy use for both of their characters. By the way, Magneto kills, like, thousands of people in this movie, and then at the end they're just like, ho, 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 see you in the next movie, Eric. <laughs> it's like, no! He is a murderer! He killed so many people! You need to put that guy in a plastic prison! Again. And don't send overweight guards with iron in their blood after him, because then he's gonna get out again. It's, it's mind-blowing how they just write that off, like, oh, yep, well, it's fine. You had your redemption, and it's, it's okay. It's all fine. It's like, no, it's not. This is terrible. It's, ba it's almost Batman v Superman bad. I didn't know that uh, Poe Dameron uh, Oscar Isaac from Star Wars Force Awakens is Apocalypse. He's the main bad guy. And there's some good moments with him. It's just, I don't know what the hell he wants in this movie. Um, motivation is a lost concept because first it's to save his, his mutant children, but then later it becomes purging the world of the, this lesser human race. Um, you know, us. He sees us as a lower race. But then it changes to, I just want to destroy the world, and then it becomes, I want to be immortal, I want to be everywhere at once. It, it, it feels like they couldn't decide on a motivation for him. Nightcrawler, god, Nightcrawler is one of my favorite mutants in X-Men, and the actor in it is fine. His German accent cuts in and out like our, like the Wi-Fi signal in my house, but it feels like they, they nerfed him in this a similar way that they nerfed Quicksilver in the last movie. They give him very convenient excuses to not solve certain problems, because otherwise there'd be no quote-unquote tension in the movie. Um, they flat out say, and he says it himself, I can only teleport to where I can see, like I need to be able to see where I'm going, or I have to have been there before. Okay, fine. How then is he teleporting, like, behind himself, and also not able to teleport, like, on the other side of a fence. There's a, when you first meet him, he's in a caged area, and he can't teleport to the other side of the fence. It's not because it's electric. He can still see the other side of the fence. There's no, he's not touching the fence. There's no reason why he can't get past it. There's a couple of moments like that where he's just like, Oh, I, I can't teleport. I don't know what the problem is. Shut up, you're a teleporter. Do it. Although, Nightcrawler in a Thriller Jacket, I will watch that movie all day long. You want to just make a Nightcrawler movie with him in a Thriller Jacket? I'm there. I'm kind of stunned rigid that X-Men Apocalypse has anything in common with Batman v Superman at all, let alone this many things. 
the the plot again just happens in sequence uh, random sequence of events that makes it very difficult to understand what's going on and I, I can't recommend the movie because it just the storytelling doesn't make sense it's told out of order um, there's too many things going on at once the characters all have a variety of issues whether it's just not understanding their motivation and what they want which kills the movie's tension or a character being just relegated to being a device for other characters, being an object. And there's random fan service in there that will either please some or annoy others. And the, the writing is far too coincidental to the point of breaking your immersion. The editing is confusing and it mixes you up and doesn't make sense. It, it's altogether very disappointing and really kind of dumb. Uh, it's kind of a dumb movie. It, it doesn't really have any kind of iota of drive or intelligence to it and I'm not I'm not I know how that I, no, I know how that sounds I'm not wanting like a watchman type level of I don't, I don't even like watchman I'm not saying that it had to be super smart but it didn't have to be this dumb either the main central core of the X-Men and the world that it's in is prejudice is people being rejected for not being understood or just for being different than other people and nowadays the hot topic of transphobia in America right now proves that prejudice is still a very real unfortunately still a very real thing the core message of X-Men is still very valid you didn't have to go with a disaster movie I mean granted you still had to base it around you've been building up apocalypse I understand wanting to make it grander larger than life having a bigger scope to the whole thing and it does have to be about apocalypse but if you had interwoven some kind of a smarter message maybe not even that maybe not even the transphobia thing uh, making a comment on that but putting some kind of an uh, like a central drive or a, a message or a soul to the movie some kind of a central theme to it all like some kind of an uh, basic idea outside of let's be big let's be grand let's throw a lot of money at it that's not a good focal point for a movie to have that's not where you should start with your movie because that's how you get stuff like Transformers 4 or any of the Roland Emmerich movies or this movie which I, I, I don't recommend it I think you should skip it and wait. Um, there is no reason to see this when Civil War is still in theaters because you'll get far more bang for your buck. Civil War has, has issues also. Uh, I've gone on record by saying that Civil War is not perfect, but the issues in that do not compound on top of each other and just break the movie by the time the third act rolls around. So, yeah. That's what I thought about X-Men Apocalypse. Fuck, I just realized the first movie took place in the 60s. They met Hank McCoy. He was like in his late teens, early 30s. This movie takes place in the 80s and he looks the exact same. Mm, that, oh, that breath. Beast now can takes pills to control his beastiness. Literally, when you meet him in the movie, he's in his normal human form, and they go, whoa, wait, what happened to the, the, the blue monster thing? And literally, his line to explain it is, I can keep it under control now. Like, that is the laziest 